Hello, this is Sue Leone. Uh, I wanted to make a video for you about how to create your plat in Civil 3D. This is also how to adjust your traverse. Um, please keep in mind, this is using the first version of the Working in Civil 3D Screenshots PDF, which has a gigantic error in it, as you will see in this video. Uh, remember, pretty much everything in Civil 3D is done with a right click or by typing a command in the command line window at the bottom of the screen and then hitting enter. So make sure you have all of these things um, that you will need. Um, definitely the field book that you have created in Notepad modeled after the one that I gave you as an example. So first you're going to open in Civil 3D Imperial. You're going to open a file. I have to go find it. Uh, and it is in this zip folder. So first, we have to unzip the zip folder. So you need to right click it, extract all. Please, at this point, change username to your own username. I'm going to use the username demo. And I'm going to show the extracted files when complete because I want to show you something else in there. All right. It has a subfolder. We need to change the username of that subfolder to match. Here is another username. You can go ahead and right click and rename, change username to whatever your username is. And you want to change all of these as well. A little bit of housekeeping. Remember, if you slow double click on a file name, you can get into edit mode. We have no documents. We have our generic drawing. We have no GIS. Um, and we need to make sure that this is our field book that we want. Um, Here's the one that I want to use. So instead, I'm going to add demo because this is my field book file for this. Uh, and we already changed that. OK, so now that we've got it where we need to be, remember, it's look. that's what we're looking for. We're going to open the file. I have to go find it again. Whoops. And there it is. Now, this was made in an older version, so it is going to tell us this was saved in an earlier version of the software. I am doing this video in 2018. If you are using 2017, whenever you come to Classroom 119, you have to update it to the 2018 version. And you cannot save it back to a 2017 version after that or 2016 or earlier. So keep that in mind. Um, very soon, all of the, the classrooms that we use uh, in this department will be using the uh, Civil 3D 2018 version, um, and so that's why I'm doing the video in this method. Okay, so here it is. I am immediately going to save as, which is on the big A, save as, I am going to rename it with my username, and I'm going to put my Traverse at the end. Now, this is, I'm just giving a random number because I think I don't know what traverse you have. And save. You can see that it is now changed up there. So now we go to the survey tab 
we need to create a new figure prefix data. And you can see that we do that by clicking on figure prefix database new. And I'm going to call it L10 Traverse, whatever yours is, prefix. So there it is. And I'm also going to make a line work code set. And I'm going to accept all of the defaults. Notice there were other ones from a previous demonstration. You can just ignore them in this video. So remember, we had to accept everything that wasn't on these instructions. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to fix those. So now we have to set our working folder. Survey database, set the working folder. You have to go find it. You may think, okay, we're done with that first one. Nope, you have to put on the demo folder, or sorry, your username folder, the one that is just above all of those five default folders that I gave you. Okay, it's our working folder. And then you need to open it for editing. Now you've got more things under here. You're going to go ahead and right click on networks and make a new one. And you're going to call it after your Traverse. Uh, and you can, that's fine. Click OK. And now we're going to import the fieldbook file to this Traverse, to this network rather. So we're going to go right click on the name of your Traverse, go to import, import the field book. And it's under survey field book. There it is. We have to make a couple of changes to this and it shows that on the document change the parameters as shown below. So here we want to process the line work during import. Yes, it was no and you need to check the box and it converts it to yes. And originally, insert survey points was no, you want to check that to yes. And the good thing about this, it does remember what you like. OK. So it's doing its job. This red thing is called a geo marker. You can just ignore it. So now you need to save your file. And then you need to save as. You need to add ABJ at the end to make sure that it is a different file name so that you preserve your original data in case something goes wrong. We're going to be adjusting our Traverse in Civil 3D. And once you do that, it actually changes all of the associated files with it. Um, and so you do not want to do that to your original Traverse file. Okay, so now at this point, these directions are wrong. So what we need to do is expand our network and go down to traverses and we're gonna make a traverse. So this is L10, traverse, whatever yours is. Um, in the description, don't need to put anything. Your initial station, the way that I have taught you, you always set up on 102 and backsite 101. And therefore, your initial station is 102. Once you click into another field, like initial backsite, it should auto-populate based on what your field book file told it to. Check that everything is correct. Remember, your final forsake should be the station that you set up on. Click OK. And so now you do have a Traverse. It is in there. If you want to see it, you type Z enter, E enter, and scroll out with your scroll wheel by pulling back a little. And you can see this is sort of where our state plane coordinate system starts. 
and we're over here in Raleigh. So let's zoom into that. I'm just scrolling in and I'm clicking and holding the scroll wheel to pan and looks like our Traverse. That's awesome. Okay. Notice it's at a slightly different rotation than the picture that I gave you. Um, that just indicates that in my fieldbook file, I had this purple arrow is the NEZ. That means that that was wrong. But I'm going to keep going with this demo just to show you what to do. We need to now adjust this. So we're going to come down here to this sort of screen if it's real short and you can't see it you can actually expand that so now you're going to right click on that traverse name you've got a whole bunch of things edit traverse we're going to analyze the traverse yes we want to analyze the traverse yes we want to do an angle balance we're going to use the compass rule there are others you could do least squares which is the most precise compass rule we want to do a length weighted distribution for the vertical adjustment. Um, you could do equal distribution. It kind of doesn't matter. This is when we will be warned. So we have a horizontal closure limit. In other words, the ratio of precision of one to 10,000. So we're going to change both of these to say one in 10,000. We're going to update the survey database. This is why you have to save it as a different file name. Otherwise, it's bad. You can never recover it. All right, so now we're going to click OK. And it cranks, does its thing, and it gives you a whole bunch of these things. Here's the vertical adjustment. You can see the raw elevation from what I put in my field book was five feet off in terms of elevation. And you can see that it has then done a, um, an adjustment to the elevations to make them correct. Here shows all of the coordinates and the, the distances um, and the area showing the raw coordinates and the now adjusted coordinates. And you can see that they are different. This one does the same thing, only it also adds perimeter and our precision, the number of sides, all of that good stuff. Here is just the perimeter and precision and all of that written again. And this is telling us that the vertical error was awful, one in 538. So that's horrible, but we'll just take it. Now, you may ask, where are all of those things? Where do they live? They actually live in the database um, in the folder for your Traverse. That's where they all live if you need to look at them again. All right, so now we're going to close the survey database. So we're going to right click and close it. That way we can't change it anymore and save. All right, so now we're gonna be creating the plat. This is a little complicated if you have not used any kind of Civil 3D or even AutoCAD before. Um, we, will, we will fix that. All right, so this is what you end up with. So this says um, our address. We need, we're gonna need to update this. Uh, the first thing you need to do is double click. It actually already was highlighted on the green border viewport to find your traverse in model space. So again, you're going to Z enter, E enter, and you'll notice it is facing the wrong way. I am going to fix this in later versions of this, but this is an interesting um, command that you may be able to use. It's called dynamic view. Um, so while you are in the viewport that is like a little window into model space, um, what you need to do is find, I'm telling you that it is off to the right. 
and I'm lost. Ah, there it is. Okay, I'm just going to scroll in till I find it. Now, it looks weird, so just hit RE, enter, and it makes it so that the symbols aren't quite so big. It just regenerates it. Notice it is facing the wrong direction. That's because it is twisted. So let's try D view, dynamic view. Let's select all these objects with a green crossing window. So that is you start on the top right corner of your objects to be selected, click, and then click again. Do not click and hold, otherwise it'll be, it'll work, it won't work out right. And then hit enter to confirm your selection. So now you are in the D view command, you want to twist, and you can see in the command line window at the bottom, it says 270 degrees, it has been twisted already. So we wanna change that to zero and hit enter. And now you can see if you hit enter again, that you are out of that command and your traverse looks correct. Let's go ahead and save. Now we're gonna start adding some map elements. First thing we wanna add, um, we already have the neat line, so let's double click outside of the viewport. Um, we are going to insert a block. So down here, use type insert, and you have to browse. We are gonna be looking for the block that I apparently forgot to include in your zip file. So these are other files that you need to, to have. So you pick whichever traverse you are, they are misnumbered um, for the new. So if you are in the Southeast traverse, that would actually be traverse two, um, which is the one that I am currently using. I'll have to rename these. Okay, I wanna specify the insertion point on screen and I wanna specify the scale on screen. If that is not clicked, just go ahead and click that. Um, this is a block, I'm gonna say okay. And where do I want to put this? It is going to be there. And I just want it, oh, that's good. All right, so now I'm gonna maybe scale that a little bit lower or smaller. So I'm going to type scale, specify the base point, top left. I'm going to try this again. There we go. All right. So that is our vicinity map. Now we need to do a north arrow. And it says here you can draw a north arrow or you can insert another block. Um, I like to go to this website. Look at them all. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to click on it. It tells you the size. It's free. So we want to download the DWG and Imperial system. And so then you would just save it to your working folder. If you would like, you are welcome to save that. This is a DWG. Um, you're welcome to save that somewhere else as well. Go back to AutoCAD. Again, type insert. And this time we're gonna go look for our north arrow. Specify on screen, specify scale, okay. And I'm just moving my cursor up and down or side to side, doesn't matter. Okay. Next thing we have to do is graphical scale bar. Um, remember, these all say one to 40 because that is the most common scale. But if you double click on your viewport scale, oh, we forgot to do that. We've got to find a scale that works. So one to 40, is totally not going to work. We can't even see. Let's try one to 80. Nope, still, we're still seeing zoomed way too in. 
So we've got to have one inch equal a longer distance. Oh, that's better. Let's keep going. One to 150. And now we can get this so that it's centered. And now we're going to lock the viewport scale. So 150. So now all of these directions that say 1 to 40 or 0, 20, 40, all of that, excuse me, um, need to be altered to be 150. I'm going to go ahead and save this because I've done quite a bit. And double click off the page to get out of that viewport. So now I'm going to go down to model space, to my model tab. And I'm going to just pan over a little bit. I've got to make a graphical scale bar. I'm going to use a rectangle. So that rectangle is way up here in the Home tab, Draw Panel, Rectangle Tool. I'm going to click that. doesn't matter where I start. I'm just going to click. And then I'm going to go down to the Command Line window and say Dimensions. So the length is going to need to be equal to my scale. In this case, it's 150. The width is going to need to be 1 20th of that, which is 7.5. And so it's hard to see because it's in black on black, but it's basically saying, which, where do you want the other corner to be? Doesn't matter. Okay. So now I'm going to zoom into this. So far, that is not really... This is not really, you know, a graphical scale bar yet. So we need to make it look like that. Um, we need to put lines going across the middle and lines going up and down in the middle of the rectangle. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to use object snap and I'm going to need to use midpoint. So down here is a little box with a green dot. You want to open that drop down box, drop up box, and make sure that midpoint is clicked, is checked, and then just click back in the drawing space. And you need to also make sure that that is turned on. And you can see that you can either type O snap as a command, or you can just hit F3, or you can click that little button. Now I need to make lines. The easiest way to make a line is with the line command. You're gonna type L and press enter. And it's just asking you, what are the first points? And you want to put the points wherever there is a triangle, because that means midpoint. And in order to stop the command, you're going to hit Enter. In order to restart the same exact command, you hit Spacebar. Just saves you some keystrokes. Remember, keystrokes are time. Time is money. Save your boss money. You get praises and raises. And then hit enter or spacebar to end that command, and you now have four boxes. Well, that's better, but it's still not a really attractive graphical scale bar. So let's go ahead and hatch that. Again, the draw panel on the home tab. There's the hatch command. So you just click that. We want it to be a solid color, and we want to use black. No transparency, all of that stuff is fine. And then at the bottom, you can see it says pick internal point. That's what we want. And so if you hover over a closed polygon, it will show you what it would look like hatched. Um, the instructions say to use the bottom left and top right. And you are done, so you can hit enter. That looks a little more professional. Okay, now we need to add numbers to show how what the distance is. We're going to use those numbers. We're going to make those numbers with M text. So M T X T, enter, means multi-line text, and it says specify the first corner. Look at the current text style. It says standard text height 0. 0.2000. Now, in layout, that would be fine. However, we're in model space. And so also look, it's trying to, it's trying to snap. So let's turn the O snap off, just hit F3. Look how tiny that preview is. So we're gonna go ahead and make our text box and we're gonna type zero. And then I want you to select the zero, go up to the top left corner, 
where it says 0 0.2000. You're going to highlight that by clicking on it once, and you're going to make that probably 100 times bigger. So you're going to go up to 20. Hit enter, and that's huge. That's fine. I know it looks weird because while you're in edit mode, it's always huge compared to what it will really end up with. To see what it really is, click outside the mtext edit window. That's how big it really is. Now, that's still a little big, so I'm going to double click it, and I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to change it to maybe 17. And now it's not super gigantic. It's still not like 15. Right. So now, but I am going to center it. The reason for that is that I'm going to be using this same M text box a couple of times. Now that it's highlighted, now that it's selected, I'm going to hit Control C to copy it and Control V to paste it in the middle and at the end. Now, as the instructions say, you want M text at the bottom left corner to say zero, the center says 20, and the bottom right corner says 40. Well, that's correct if you are using a 1 to 40 scale. We, however, are not. Our scale is 150. So we need to make it say 150. Now, you don't hit enter because that would just give you another line. So you click out of it. So we've got 0, 0, 150. This one, what's half of 150? 75. Click out, and there we go. All right. So now we go back to the layout tab, layout tab, and we have to get on a certain layer. The reason for it, we have to get on the same layer as this, not the block reference, but as the viewport. And that is C Anno Match Pat. So we're on the Home tab. Up to layers. You can see we are currently writing our information onto match text. That's because we're in layout and that's where I want it to be. But this lime green layer is for our viewports. So we need to activate that. And then we're going to add another viewport. Because remember, our graphical scale bar is written is drawn full size in model space. We need to see that, but it's way over there. And we don't want to just make everything smaller. That would change our scale and we'd have to start all over again. So we're going to make a viewport. So the, the command is M view, hit enter. And it says specify the corner of the viewport. Remember the command line window talks to you. So let's, um, you know what, I, I don't know where it's going to be, so let's just make a gigantic viewport. And let's double click inside it, and you can see we're going to have to pan and zoom to find our map. And our, oh, there's our little scale bar. Remember, R, E, enter, we'll make all that stuff look normal. Okay, so we've got it just about in the center. I'm not worried about zooming in because I'm going to use the scale, this little drop down box that has all these weird numbers, and I'm going to make it the same size, the same scale as my map. Double click outside the paper, click once on the viewport to select it, and then make it smaller so that it's just the size you need. Now, in order to move that, uh, you're going to right click, basic modify tools, move, and it says specify the base point. So I'm just going to, um, it doesn't matter, you don't even have to click on it somewhere. I'm going to click right in the middle, and I'm going to move it where I want it, which is right there. Looks good. Well, now we need a scale statement because we don't have any units in our title block, which is a, a mistake. 
Um, it should. But so we're going to put our units in that way. Meanwhile, there's these weird green boxes. I do not want them to be um, on my final product. So I'm going to go ahead now that I've made all my viewports, I'm going to turn that layer off on the home tab, layers, go to the layer drop down, and you are going to click this little light bulb, turn it off, and it's going to say, yes, I want it to turn it off. Now I'm going to add some text. So I need to not be on the layer that is off. I want to activate the layer that has all my text. So I'm going to select it. And then now everything that I write, everything that I draw will be on that correct layer. All right. So I need to do some more M text. And the first corner is going to be here. It's a good size. I do want it to be centered, however. I'm going to say one inch space equals space 150 space feet. And there's a, a little grabber here. You can make it however big you need to. Remember, it's M text, so you can't hit enter to escape the command. You have to click out. And you just grab the grip. And it's already centered within the text box, and you just make it look good. Escape deselects everything. We've done a lot, so let's save. Um, I noticed that this is in the wrong spot, so I am going to move this. And I want to make sure my O snap is on so that I can have it go right to that corner. All right. So now we've got to edit this title block. It says traverse number one, but I did traverse number two. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to say, OK. So now I'm in the edit the block. I'm in the block editor. So I'm going to double click this because it's actually a block within a block. This is the, whatever the class section is. Add your name here. Add the date that it was surveyed. Uh, I'm going to say that it was actually November. And indicate your traverse number. Okay. And so that updates that. You can close the block editor, save the changes. And now when you zoom in, look, it has changed everything to be correct. Um, plats that are recorded would not say preliminary plat not for recordation conveyances or sales. It, and they would actually have a lot of other um, boilerplate as well. So we have made our scale bar and we know approximately where all of our traverse points are. Now we need to make sure that our plat doesn't show all our sight lines. It actually shows the property corners. And as you can see, there are for each of the three um, traverses, uh, for each of the three traverses, there are different property corners. So this traverse is actually on the new uh, numbering system is number three. So uh, I'm going to go back to my model space, zoom out. Properties. Set the style. Display. Direction lines. Okay, so we took off all the lines. Now we just have our points. You can see that is a Kogo point and it shows the description and the number, the elevation, and the northing and easting, which is the same as the grid northing and easting, but it also calculates a latitude and longitude. That's nice. It is on layer V node. All right, so need to make sure that node is there. So 
um, you needed to figure out your coordinates and elevations and bearings to your property corners, not just on the, you know, between all of your traverse points. And so we know that that is the bookstore. So that is our back site. Larry S. to the knoll, right? Uh, so we need to draw a line. So we'll go to home, come up to line. Actually, I'm just going to type L, enter. And here's my first point. Here's my second point. And area F. Lot F, pedestrian bridge, and back to Larry S. Enter and I'm done. I can't see those lines. Um, what layer did I just draw that on? Ah, that's why. All right, I'm gonna select all those. And I'm gonna put them on property boundary. Okay, so that is my Traverse 3 property corners, my property line. So now I'm going to make a parcel out of that so that it gives me the distance and bearing automatically. That's very nice. So go up to here. Um, it is parcel. If this is bigger, it actually says parcel. So we're going to do parcel from objects. Site one, parcel style is property. It's gonna end up on these things. I want to have the name, square foot, and acres. I am going to automatically add line add segment labels, which is bearing over distance. And I'm going to not erase existing entities just in case I make a mistake. I don't have to redraw those lines again. So look at this, site one, leave it there. Property style. You have to click this box, automatically add segment labels, and you have to change the area label style to name, square foot, and acres. And then uncheck erase existing entities. Click OK. Ta da. So now, if you zoom in on this, you can see that that is going southwest for 592.10 feet. These are horizontal distances. All right, uh, this one needs to be flipped because it needs to be bearing over distance. That is our preferred way. Same thing here. Make sure you deselect and do one at a time. Hit enter to deselect. And that one looks good. Okay, so this is property number one, it has 440,000 square feet. It's approximately 10 acres. Um, all right, so now let's look at our layout. And you can see that it is, uh, looks a little bit different. So let's double click in there. Pan. Oh, I locked it. Unlock it. Pan it a little bit, make it look nice. And relock it. Remember, we did not zoom. If you actually accidentally zoom, go back to one inch equals 150 or whatever yours is. Um, yeah, this, this looks good. And uh, now uh, we're ready to output. All right, so now I forgot to tell you how to output it as a PDF. We have made some changes, so let's go ahead and save again. You're gonna to go to the Output tab. You're gonna export the current layout. 
Uh, you have the option of doing all layouts, but since we didn't use the second tab for something different, we don't want a two page PDF. So there's the current layout. We're gonna export to PDF and it's gonna say, where do you wanna put it? And you're gonna put it in documents. And you're going to call it again, username. You probably, uh, actually what I would like you to do is change this to L10 and take off the adjusted because you don't need that. If you would like to open it in the viewer when you are done, you can just click that checkbox. I'm choosing to do that and then click save. And here it is. You can see it does have layers. We have used six layers, vicinity sketch. Here is um, our survey network and its points and our text um, one that is visible. Viewports don't show up on here if they're, if they're hidden, but we can hide all of this stuff because they're all on different layers. Ah, that's the North Arrow that went with that. Here's the North Arrow here. This is what it looks like. Congratulations, you've made it through. If you have any questions, please review this video, stopping as you need to. Again, this is not perfect by any means, but boy, this is a, a great beginning for you in Civil 3D. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.